Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm going to share with you the six books that I read in November. The first book is The Quilter's Apprentice by Jennifer Chiaverini. The blurb reads, After moving with her husband Matt to the small college town of Waterford, Pennsylvania, Sarah McClure struggles to find a fulfilling job. In the meantime, she agrees to help 75-year-old Sylvia Compson prepare her family estate, Elm Creek Manor, for sale. As part of her compensation, Sarah is taught how to quilt by this cantankerous elderly woman who is a master of the craft. During their lessons, Mrs. Compson reveals how her family was torn apart by tragedy, jealousy and betrayal, and her stories force Sarah to face uncomfortable truths about her own alienation from her widowed mother. As their friendship deepens, Mrs. Compson confides in Sarah the truth about why she wants to sell Elm Creek Manor. In turn, Sarah seeks a way to bring life and joy back to the estate so that Mrs. Compson can keep her home and Sarah can keep her cherished friend. The Quilter's Apprentice teaches deep lessons about family, friendship and sisterhood and about creating a life as you would a quilt. With time, love and patience, piecing the miscellaneous and mismatched scraps into a beautiful whole. I've read this whole series of books before. This is the first in a series of, oh, maybe about 15 books. And I've read them all before, as I mentioned, and I have lately just been having a craving to read them again. So I thought I'd begin all over again, and this is book number one in the series. And I enjoyed it as much as I did the first time I read it. I would recommend these books, and you don't have to be into quilting to enjoy the books because it's not really about the quilting it's about the quilters and about their story so i would recommend this book and the whole series the next book is strange the dreamer by laney taylor the dream chooses the dreamer not the other way around and laszlo strange war orphan and junior librarian has always feared that his dream chose poorly since he was five years old he's been obsessed with the mythic lost city of weep but it would take someone bolder than he to cross half the world in search of it then, a stunning opportunity presents itself in the person of a hero called the God Slayer and a band of legendary warriors, and he has to seize his chance or lose his dream forever. What happened in Weep 200 years ago to cut it off from the rest of the world? What exactly did the God Slayer slay that went by the name of God? And what is the mysterious problem he now seeks help in solving? The answers await in Weep, but so do more mysteries, including the blue-skinned goddess who appears in Laszlo's dreams. How did he dream her before he knew she existed? And if all the gods are dead, why does she seem so real? Now, as you can tell from the blurb, this is a fantasy book and I am so not into fantasy. I generally don't enjoy fantasy, especially if it's set kind of in another world. So there's some fantasy like Harry Potter, for example, that's set in the real world. And then there's some which has a fantasy world and I particularly don't generally enjoy those books but Lainey Taylor I had heard so many recommendations for her book Daughter of Smoke and Bones which turned out to be the first in a trilogy and because I'd heard so many recommendations I put it on my to read list this was a while ago and eventually I got the book out of the library and I began reading the back blurb and it was like this one you know mentioned fantasy things and I was like Ugh. But because I'd heard it was so good, I read it anyway, and I loved it. I loved the whole trilogy. Grant read it and loved it, which is saying something. Lainey Taylor writes so beautifully with an economy of words. She doesn't have long flowery proses. She chooses exactly the right words and strings them together. It is like poetry, and her storylines are gripping so enjoyed her previous book that when I saw this book on the library shelf all I saw was Lainey Taylor and I was like right I'll get that book out I don't know what it's about I know nothing about it but I'm going to read it because it's by her and I loved it absolutely loved it I found that I looked forward to the next time I was going to read it you know when you're like oh I'm looking forward to going to bed because I can read my book or making an excuse to pick it up in the afternoon just to read what happens next one of those books finished the book realized it was not finished because it was the first of a series race to get the second book in the series and she's still busy writing it don't you hate it when that happens so i love the book and i would recommend it but not if you don't want to have to wait for the next one really annoying but if you are looking for something similar that is by lenny taylor daughter of smoke and bone definitely wonderful go and read the next book is the summer seaside kitchen by jenny colgan Flora is definitely, absolutely sure that escaping from the quiet Scottish island where she grew up to the noise and hustle of the big city was the right choice. 
What was there for her on Muir? It's a place where everyone has known her all her life and no one will let her forget the past. In the city, she can be anonymous, ambitious, and indulge herself in her hopeless crush on her gorgeous boss, Joel. When a new client demands Flora's presence back on Muir, she's suddenly swept back into life with her brothers, all strapping loud and seemingly incapable of basic housework, and her father. As Flora indulges her newfound love of cooking and breathes life into the dusty little pink-fronted shop on the harbour, she's also going to have to come to terms with past mistakes and work out exactly where her future lies. Not a whole lot to say about this book. I did enjoy it. I enjoyed the characters and the setting. It was a bit different just to be set on this small island and just overall a fun read. Bit chiclety, light reading. If you're looking for something like that, then I would recommend this one. The next book is The Christmas Quilt by Jennifer Chiavarini. When Christmas Eve comes to Elm Creek Manor, the tenor of the holiday is far from certain. Sylvia Bergstrom Compson, the master quilter, has her own reasons for preferring a quiet, even subdued Christmas. Her young friend Sarah McClure, however, takes the opposite view and decides to deck the halls brightly. As she explores the trunks packed with Bergstrom family decorations that haven't been touched in more than 50 years, Sarah discovers a curious Christmas quilt. Begun in seasonal fabrics and patterns, the quilt remains unfinished. Sylvia reveals that the handiwork spans several generations and a quartet of Bergstrom quilters her great aunt, her mother, her sister, and herself. As she examines the array of quilt blocks each family member contributed but never completed, memories of Christmas's past emerge. At Elm Creek Manor, Christmas began as a celebration of simple virtues, joy and hope buoyed by the spirit of giving. As each successive generation of Bergstroms lived through its unique trials, the antebellum era, the Great Depression, World War II, tradition offered sustenance even during the most difficult times. For Sylvia, who is coping with the modern problem of family dispersed, estranged or even forgotten, reconciliation with her personal history may prove as elusive as piecing the Christmas quilt. Elm Creek Manor is full of secrets, from a Christmas tree with unusual properties to the sublime Bergstrom strudel recipe. Sylvia's tales at first seem to inform her family legacy, but ultimately illuminate far more from the importance of women's art to its place in commemorating our shared experience at Christmas time and in every season. This is the next book in the series. I mentioned the first book that I started with, which was The Quilter's Apprentice. I think this was written as book number eight, but I found as I read the whole series that it slotted in well as book number two. So that is the order that I read them in. And it came in a timely manner because I am switching over to Christmas books at this point. I decided that for the whole of December, well, starting at the end of November, I would only read Christmas books because I'm so not into Christmas and I was hoping it would put me in the mood. So it was convenient that this was the next book in the series anyway and it was a Christmas one. I would recommend it, recommend the whole series as I mentioned. The next book is The Twelve Dates of Christmas by Lisa Dickinson. At 30, Claudia's life is stale and the romance with long-term boyfriend Seth has disappeared. Determined to inject some festive spark back into their love life, Claudia and Seth go on their first date in a very long time. But when the night ends in disaster, Claudia suddenly finds herself facing life and Christmas alone. Life alone is exciting, scary, and full of soon forgotten exercise regimes and ill-advised attempts at crafting sexy underwear. It's also filled up with dates, surprisingly. With best friends Penny and Nick at her side, a surplus of festive markets, mulled wine, and Christmas tunes, Claudia attempts to face all this change with gusto. One thing's for certain, this year, Christmas is going to be very different. This is the story of Claudia and her 12 dates of Christmas. Hilarious, uplifting and romantic, it's a story about losing love, finding love and discovering what's been there all along. Expect Christmas sparkle, butterflies in your stomach romance and a lot of very funny moments in the 12 dates of Christmas. This book was complete chick lit, there's no getting around it, no other way to describe it, but it was enjoyable and I would recommend it if you're looking for a light read. The last book that I read in November is Christmas at the Cupcake Cafe by Jenny Colgan. Izzy Randall, proud owner of the Cupcake Cafe, is in love and couldn't be happier. Her new business is thriving and she's surrounded by close friends. Even if her cupcake colleagues Pearl and Caroline don't seem quite as upbeat about the upcoming season of snow and merriment. But when her boyfriend Austin is scouted for a possible move to New York, Izzy is forced to face up to the prospect of a long distance romance. And when the Christmas rush at the cafe, with its increased demand for her delectable creations, begins to take its toll, Izzy has to decide what she holds most dear. This December, Izzy will have to rely on all her reserves of courage, good nature and cinnamon to make sure everyone has a Merry Christmas one way or the other. 
I enjoyed this book partly because I read the book preceding it, which was Meet Me at the Cupcake Cafe. I think that's what it was called. And this is a follow on to that book and timely because it's a Christmas book. I read the other one a few years ago, so I vaguely remember the story, but I don't think you need to have read the first story to enjoy this. I think you'd enjoy it more if you kind of knew everybody's backstory and how they got there, but it's not crucial. But it was enjoyable and I would recommend it. So those are the six books that I read in November. December is going to be all Christmas books until Christmas because the day after Christmas I'm like done with Christmas and I don't want a Christmas anymore and how many times can I say Christmas? I wonder what you guys are doing to prepare for the festive season. What do you do to kind of get yourself in the mood or do you just love Christmas and it doesn't take much to get you in the mood? I'd love to know so leave me a comment down below. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.